I had set up a very high concept, high action, eloquent start to this video, but then unfortunately when I played it back I had no sound, and as you guys are going to see, my iPhone 7 is really starting to struggle with focus. So, this is it. Right Huxley? As always, working in a small garage with not much kit, we had to uh, improvise. So, I don't know what sizes these are. I think that's half, this is half inch, and I think this, this socket is three quarter inch. So I'm using an adapter to go up anyway, so this is obviously not gonna be strong enough. So I welded that to take the play out of that, and then stood on it, and this bent, and I was like, ooh. Then I welded a bar, on the top and this this bent probably to about 30 degrees and then it then the nuts came off now the reason why i stopped the quick video is because look at this this is fairy fest look at that i'm really i don't really understand drum brakes too much well i understand the concept but it's just not really something i'm interested in but oh it's crazy so we found the leaker let's pull it all off Okay, we are in our happy place at Monrovia Hell KQ Pick Apart, and I'm here with Volvo Yoda, and he is valiantly lay on his back like he normally does and uh, is pulling the calipers off this 2012 onwards focus exactly what we need awesome see this is the image of a professional working it doesn't look like this when i do it <laughs> here we go calipers have been got and yes they came complete with pads so you know what those pads are staying right in there plenty of meat on lovely job um, and here are the hubs. So those are the longer studs. With the Mustang 10 holes, the stud doesn't come out of the end of the nut. It stays kind of inside and I don't like that. So plenty of meat on those, job done. They're cleaned and packed with grease. Do that one and then uh, head outside. So one thing I just did was cut this kind of the mounting part of the backing plate off because I didn't know whether that distance is needed for any kind of like predetermined length for any kind of anything that goes there, you know, so that mounts up first. Um, so I'm going to put that on just so everything is as it was when the drum came off. Going to get this step out of the way first, and of course we have a flying something. It looks kind of grey here as well. Okay, anyway, pretty sky. Okay, I digress. First of all, I'm going to do the... Um, seriously? Come on! Uh, they not know I'm filming, for God's sake! Okay. <clears throat> First job, going to uh, get the e-brake swapped out. That's the old one. That's the new one. I think it's a Cosworth part. Tim, I hope you reply on the uh, video and let everybody know. But different ends, I think. Something like that. But yeah, so, brand spanking new. Got some pink in it as well. Nothing wrong with a bit of pink, so I'll get that in now. And then see what else we can get done before it may rain, or whatever's gonna happen. These are the little grommets that mount on the top of the rear arm, I'm pretty sure, but these bits won't go through the hole on my rear subframe. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off them so they'll insert through the hole. Okay, it's got dark, but we're gonna carry on. This LED light is probably gonna go out in a short while and then we'll get another light but we have to move on sorry it's not more clean got to get it back on the wheels and moving so he'll be coming apart again uh, for um, um, poly bushes in the back and all that kind of stuff oh don't fall don't fall poly bushes up there and stuff like that so we'll get her uh, we'll get her going for now
my bed. See? I'm always doing shit the wrong order. Okay, try this again. So that's gonna go on first. No bed. That's the dog, by the way. He's fairly deaf now, which is inconvenient when he wanders into the street. Such is life. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. So that seems to be the next point. Okay, so that's there. Okay, that's that. Uh, so bracket now. So I'm just ever nipping everything for right now just to see if I'm doing this even remotely right. Okay, so I guess then a disc then a caliper. Okay. Now from the orientation of the handbrake cable coming in from the front, I would assume that, I mean, this, this caliper has left hand on it, which would mean on the focus at least. Was it that way? Maybe. So I would assume it's gonna go like that. The handbrake cable is gonna come in this way. I assume the one that says right hand will be right hand. The uh, pistons on these are the fancy turny inny type. And I'm gonna have to figure out uh, a tool for that tomorrow. So, took the pads out for now, so I've got clearance to put this on. Oh shit! Damn it! Why not start a new day off with a plane? Okay, back at it. So, uh, had a little bit of a talk to Tim Spencer last night and we don't need that for any kind of like uh, distance for the bearing to work within so I'm gonna whip that off and take that out also another thing I'm struggling with a little bit is tighten, tightening up the the um, the hub because this uh, this knot goes tight really quick so I think what I'm possibly gonna do is um, you know double some nuts up and you know hold it while I tighten this down that made any sense whatsoever but anyway let's get on so this is a take two on the other side you can see there is no uh, backing plate you know where the old drum backing plate used to be that used to be sandwiched in there so we've got rid of that brackets mounted up now what I did is I welded some angle to two nuts and then I can chop this when I've tightened it down because I've not been able to hold this hub while putting this nut on so we'll see if this works so that little contraption I just made actually totally worked and snapped itself off as the 
tension increased. Now this isn't torque down at all, but everything's tight and there's no play in it. So your all positioning is going to be, you know, in place and right. So that's the basic setup is, you know, as I say, that was where the, uh, that was where the drum brake backing plate went in there. Uh, sorry, went in there. So we removed that hub directly onto the arm and then the bracket bolted in there. Okay, and obviously longer studs that I put on. I'm quite sure that there are going to be many internet people that say, you don't want to be like that. So these are the welded on, you know, the nuts that have been welded with the bed frame and that anchors to the ground. And then I just turn this big rod until, you know, it all seats and my clearances are all right for disc, caliper, pads, all that kind of stuff. self-clearancing snaps itself off there you go see not not talked but I've got a little bit of play but it gives me all my uh, distances between the various things let me show you the uh, e-brake cable I put that on last night and it was really dark so that's underneath the e-brake lever and then that clip was a complete pig to put on when I took it off my other cable somebody would put it on the other way so I was trying to put it on the other way but it wouldn't go so clip goes that way and then this is your adjustment for the actual cable once everything's all in place uh, this bends so that's how you get it into this bit that baffled me for a little minute how to get that part to thread through this hole because you have to thread this through first and then feed it through we just bend it and feed it through living that classy autozone life or autozone hollywood life in the parking lot let's wind these calipers in it's all coming together so i've just held the disc on with a nut so it's in the right place and everything is awesome source clearance is perfect pad coverage i don't know if you can tell looks like it's absolutely perfect um yeah, so the e-brake cable is going to go in through there and the brake hose is going to go in through that lower one. So I guess that is next. Not going to lie, um, just had another little one of my confused moments. One thing when I was talking to Tim, he was like, yeah, and the brake hose gets uh, routed around the front of the coil spring. And I'm like, hang on, this points backwards, but these go to there not to there this rubber hose gets removed so I'm not going to confirm it but I may have been wrestling with this for about the past 20 minutes with needle nose trying to get it out it's a circle clip obviously not going to happen then I happened to glance down at this one and thought oh there's a hole so if anybody else is as Dim as me, screwdriver, hole, lever it down. Okay, now we can pull it with a pair of pliers. Now, what I've seen a couple of guys do, which is completely acceptable and totally fine because once you've got a bit of tension, it'll stay, is this putting it like that so it sits in the crook and won't go anywhere. I just don't like it. So, because I am armed with an angle grinder, which gets me into trouble a lot of the time. And you can see there that that elbow is stopping it slipping over the actual hook. So if you can see that black line, I'm going to have a bit of a trim and see if I can make it sit over properly. So that's pretty much it really. So braided hose fits up there. That's not used anymore around the front of the spring. And out this way. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Then into caliper there uh, managed to just be able to sneak this rubber bush into the end of this clamp hammered that down uh, saw some damn fine gentlemen on the uh, forums and groups and all that kind of stuff put some hose around that I also put hose around this but it's not quite small enough so I put a zip tie a loose zip tie around there as well so obviously the sway bar is going to move and I don't want it to pull the, the hose out that's going to get swapped out for some smaller hose just to protect it um, just took, just tickled the edge 
of that. So now that goes around the hook. Uh, there should be a circlip, you know, on the Cosworth, there's a circlip that goes, that holds this into the back of the handbrake, but it's too thick on this. I'm probably gonna have a look at the focus and see what the arrangement is for the e-brake, but that's pretty much what it is right now on this. So there we go, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna try and bolt up the 10 holes now, the wheels, without a spacer to see if they clear the this caliper kit setup. So let's see how that looks now. Just before I do that, just wanted to show you the hub area. So that's where the old backing plate for the drums used to go. So that's not there anymore. That's the mounting bracket. That's Tim's bolts there. And that's the, uh, and there's the caliper. So that's the setup from the back. Looks like I didn't need to get spaces. Yeah, well, that is without spaces. Come on, focus. What? My phone's having a major problem. Um, yeah, seems to be fine without spacers, so they're clear. But I want to put spacers on because I want the wheel to sit further out of the back, so on they will go. Okay, still very excited by the offset of the uh, wheel and the sticky outy pokey situation with the 10mm spacers on. Oh, very happy. Uh, she's back on the ground, and now we need to change out that which is the brake proportioning valve with that. And if you can see it, my eyes are getting bad. But anyway, that union basically joins the pipe that goes in the front and the pipe that goes in the back of that um, proportioning valve. And as they say in France, voir flipping law, out with the old. And in with that lovely new union. And that's it. So there we have it, a basic overview of how to fit Tim Spencer's kit in this uh, case of Focus Rear Brakes onto an XR40i. Pretty simple, a little bit fiddly, but all around awesome. Uh, excuse the hat please because I am filming from the frigid lands of LA. And on that note, I'm happy. It's complete. We shall end the episode. If you like what you've seen and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. I think next we may be doing the front cross member. Fabrication. <laughs>